Okay, welcome back to Harold Halibut, everyone. This is part two of this really intriguing, weird game. Uh, let's see what's going on with this guy. What is this? Hello, Mr. Secretary. Uh, eight, right? I'm afraid not. You must be thinking of my brother, Secretary Eight. Or Secretary Twenty-Four. Oh, they all look the same. Oh, sorry. I always get that mixed they all up. The, yeah, they're identical there twins, I guess. just three of you, right? Well, now, uh, three of us work for Old Water, yes. Oh, so there's another who doesn't? Hmm, yes, Secretary Eight is the man to ask about that. He remembers it all much better than I do. Remembers? Yeah, remembers, what? Okay. Sounds serious. Anyway, I'm neglecting my post. Welcome to the Agora Arcades. Would you like to partake in the monthly All Water Raffle Bonanza? Oh, sure. Wait, is it free to enter? Certainly. The raffle is a generous gesture of frivolity from All Water to you, the citizens of Fedora. This is a Game Pass game. What are the prizes? What are the prizes? Well, there's a long list of luxuries, a plethora of pleasurable prizes. The full list can be perused at your leisure on the All Water Public Access Forum. You know it's going to be a piece of crap if we win anything. <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. It's a gum. I'll just spin her up. Drum roll, please. And... Looks like you were unlucky this time, but that's life. Try again next month. Great. <laughs> Speak to secretary number eight, another task. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> Rotating door. Well, here's the arcade, which essentially means the mall. For those who don't know, the original term for arcade meant a mall where you'd shop, but then later on it changed to mean something different. <clears throat> Got a message from John Slipple Jr. Yes, Slippy's double black diamond deals are now on for one day only. Don't sleep on Slippy's exclusive new campaign launch event. Visit, visit Slippy's today. We have a message for Cyrus if we find him, and we have to search for the blue rock. And if we find secretary number eight, those are our three tasks. All right. Gertrude's beer zone. Get some beer. Tim, what do you think about the announcement then? I think it sounds exciting, Alon. You think everything sounds exciting? Wait a minute, do they well, have faces? That new boy thing and all. They don't have faces. Might give us Look. Something new to natter about. A new boy, Tim. What's it going to pick up anyway? Oh, Alien yes, they do. Never mind. Drama? Not sure, Alon. Maybe we'll get some fancy pictures. Seems to me be more interesting to go sideways than back up top. You're going sideways, Alon. Right, you are, Zim. It's all this sitting around nattering with you. <laughs> okay, who's this? Hey, Tommy. Oh, this is Tommy. I don't suppose you'll be back in the shop soon? <sighs> or, I mean, I can come back later? Oh, uh, no. What do you need? It's just that the professor and I need some sea rocks. I mean, filter rocks from older times that have come from the filters. And I feel like you might have one? Shh, quiet! Don't be mentioning Filter Frankie! You know that every piece in my inventory is legally obtained <laughs> or, or legally found. Of course. Right? Right, sure. That's why I'm here. To legally acquire <laughs> an item of yours <laughs> that you may have. Okay, look and listen here, Longy Long Pants. I shut the store for a reason, you know? Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to call you Longy Long Pants just then. You sure you don't want me to come back <laughs> another time? He's pissy. It's fine. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I've got this gut feeling that my beautiful angel wife don't care about me no more. Oh, no. Oh. No, I know I'm oversharing again. Tommy, you gotta stop oversharing. Look, kid, either way, I'm not gonna be of any help to you today. Uh, if you're sure. Yeah, you just caught me on a blue note, that's all. She's been spending so much time with that beautiful chunk of marble. You know, the guy in the silk robe and the flowing locks? Who? what's his name? The teacher? It sounds like the teacher is who she's, he's talking about. Check on Bridget. Harold, if you're going to lecture me... I wasn't. 
Well, swell. But could you leave me alone anyway? I have to go talk to Bridget about this. Huh. Sitting there getting drunk. A robot is the bartender, apparently. Slippy's winter sport goods? Buy now. Biggest, shiniest, finest, and fast. Why would you need winter sport goods if you live underwater? You're cool. So be cool all of the time with my patented Consta Cool fabrics. So you see, that's the slippy difference. And if you just watch this exciting infomercial. Ah, Harold! If it isn't my favorite multi maintenance man. They're leaving. Wait, are you sure I can't interest you in. Oh, never mind. Hello. How's business? He's wearing a vest. Every man, right? He's wearing a I'm vest, everybody. Rant, and I need your opinion. I mean, I think it's great, but maybe it's too high concept. Oh, well, I'm not really qualified to... Nonsense. Just watch. I was trying to read a book in the comfort of my own home, but my own home wasn't comfortable. <laughs> it was too hot to concentrate. Will I ever be able to read to my children? or enjoy the adventures of the Fedora 4 from my armchair again. Why, yes, of course you will. With my patented, tried and tested aircon system, you'll always be able to keep your brain, books, and body sweat free and as cool as Jimson Jameson himself. <laughs> Who the hell's that? Please note, Slippy's aircon system is not officially endorsed by the creators of the Fedora 4 or their likenesses. Burr. Sometimes I just can't get cozy. <laughs> How's a man supposed to look after his family with cold arms? My family are depending on me. What am I going to do? Clad yourself in one of our triple insulating cozy jackets and matching thermal underwear, of course. <laughs> you know what they say, warm hands, warm heart. Slippies means heritage. Oh, I wonder what the temperature is like on this base. tradition of winter sports enthusiasts. Slipmeyers throughout history have kept everyone from royalty to the common man warm and cozy in their pursuits of the great outdoors. Slippies means social responsibility. The Schlippmeyers were one of the most generous sponsors of the Fedora One project, <laughs> giving back to the people, sharing their knowledge of insulation technologies and considerable wealth to keep humanity warm and cozy among the stars. Yeah. Remember, you deserve to live and work at whatever temperature is right for you. With over 200 years of expertise, you can bet the weather forecast shows slippies across the board. Come in out of the cold and into slippies. Slippies. Heat protection so good, it'll be a cold day in hell. Well, what did you think? It was slick like you. Um, it was... There were lots of things, and... Uh... Great, so glad you agree. And while you're here... I was just going... Ah, oh, come on. You can't go without testing my new half-pipe experience. Testing? It's new and improved by a little modification <laughs> to my patented aircon system that I'm calling the Freezer! Is that... Do I have to... I'm glad you asked. It combines precise atmospheric condition synthesis with the ski sim to recreate the most lifelike experience of skiing you can dream of. Right. That sounds... Uh, wait. Me? Skiing? But I don't... Nonsense. I'm sure you're a natural. Now let's get you strapped in. Great. Okay. What the hell? What? What is he doing? He's gyrating. Look. He's gyrating. Gyrating. <laughs> What? What is going on right now? Uh. Oh God. <laughs> oh, Harold, you were really blown away by it, huh? First time's the hardest. It's all downhill from there. <laughs> I guess I'm slippy by name, but you're slippy by nature. <laughs> I guess so. I'd really better go now. 
Sure, sure, but just so you know, I run a pretty generous referral scheme, if you're interested. For every customer you get. <laughs> Got a dash. Okay, Harold. Be skiing ya. Notebook skiing. I got an achievement. A prez ski. Try out slippy ski slope. There it is. Look at that amazing artwork design, by the way. He's a really good artist, as you can tell. So, basically, the po I, like, what is the point? They're underwater. They're, they're never really going to ski. So, literally, he has the most pointless thing possible in an underwater base. You would never need this kind of clothing, ever, right? Like, what would you ever need it for? Yeah, I guess the only reason you would shop here is to show you have money to, to blow, right? It's kind of like people today who wear a fancy watch. It's like, why do you wear a watch? There's no point. Everyone has a phone that has the, the clock on it now. So no one would ever need a watch ever. But if someone has a fancy watch, like they're wearing a Rolex or something, it's like, oh, I see. You're rich. I have a, I have a Movado watch. Oh, you see, you just blow your money on stuff, right? You, you would never need that clothing ever. <laughs> That's pretty, pretty weird. Remember, it's all water. Potions... Potions and magic. The store is called Potions, Potions and Magic. Wait, you can't go in? How do you go? You can't go in. How are you supposed to get in? You can't go into that store. Huh. Well, soap, kelp, pop, buns. General store closed. This must be Tommy's store. And by the way, there's the blue rock. There's the blue rock. The bane of my day. We can't get Where's right Tommy now. When you need him. Yeah. We cannot get it yet. Intercom Oasis. Mecha Cosmo Ram Neutro Bit. Open insert coin. What, is it like an arcade? I guess it's supposed to be like a video arcade. Okay. We'll check this out in a sec. But in the meantime, I received a $20 tip. From Jared, who says, Vest time. All right, thank you, Jared. So we will have a vest on today's stream. Thank you guys for supporting the premiere of Harold Halibut, one of the weirdest games I think I've ever played. But it is intriguing, and I am getting uh, some entertainment value out of it. So, all right. Um, so with that, let's do a poll of what vest you guys would like to see today. Which vest is Halibut best? Well, you know you gotta have the McFly because it looks like a like a life-preserving vest, and that makes sense for water. Let's also do the red vest. Let's do the original beige, and let's do the gray vest. Let's just do oddball vests today. Okay, let's see which which one you guys want. All right. In the meantime, what is this? An arcade machine? Rapid Force Fly Zone. Oh, I'm playing. Oh shit! Oh, oh, oh! What the? Oh, I guess all you do is fly. The buttons don't seem to do it. Oh wait, there's a turbo. Or not? I don't get it. I put, when I press the trigger, the screen like jiggles. Oh crap! Oh no! Like an N64 game, right? That's what it feels like. It's like Star Fox, but better graphics than the original Star Fox. Oh, I missed that one too. 
Oh, missing so many. This is like someone that's like Superman 64. You're right. It totally is like Superman 64. Oh, I missed another one. I got an achievement though. A winner is you. Fly rapid fly for zone for two minutes. Oh, without dying. An achievement for doing it and not dying. Oh no! Oh! Oh, dude, I'm not doing that again. I got my achievement. We're done. I wonder how long that is. I was seriously, that went for over two minutes. We're still going. Like, damn, I wonder how long the stage is. It's kind of boring with no shooting, right? It's just flying. It's kind of boring. This. Three Doppeldecker? Is it the same game? Are you serious? It's literally the same game. It's exactly the same game, except now you're getting rings in the sky. How do you even, wait, how do you even lose this game? There's like nothing to, to touch to die, right? It is nice music, I agree. You're collecting sonic rings in the sky. And there's no way to lose. How would you ever lose? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to really go out of your way to try to fly into those other planes. Getting rupees from Zelda. Oh! Oh, you're kidding me. It starts over. Oh! Well, I don't care about the achievement. It's probably the same thing. Survive two minutes, but that's pretty boring. Hey there. <laughs> the name is Eve, not there. Oh, sorry, Eve. Can I help you, mister? No, just came to visit Rafi. What you playing? Oh, some game. I'd rather be reading, but here we are. Duh. What do you like to read? Anything, really, you know. At the moment, hegemony and the pan liberalism agenda of agnostic psychopolitics. Mm -hmm. Mostly. That's a book? Yes. Say, did you know Captain at Large Baronhout holds the high score in this game? No, that's cool. I always wondered what those initials at the top of the leaderboard meant. Yeah. Well, see ya. Is this Pilot Wing 64? Uh, uh, see you later, Jade. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, hey, Rafi. Hmm. Harold. Is everything okay? The tube route to the school in the social district is out. Oh, right. Makes sense. Annoying. That's not what's annoying. Oh? Kids. Everywhere. Ma. All the time. No school means no peace. They're just hanging around. Taking space. He's got the Marge Simpson hairdo. Look. <laughs> oh dear. But isn't that what this place is for? Kind of? Oh. I see. Good luck. Ma. A person who works at a video arcade and hates kids. Okay, then. Notebook Rafi Zelters. <laughs> it's a shrugging. It's him shrugging. What the? Oh, I'm stuck. So we go up. What's this? Oh, this is the stage we saw earlier. What's going on over here? Oh, oh not. Hey, how is it going, Harold? Not too shabby, thanks. How about you? I'm super, actually. I found a book. Oh, cool. What kind of book? It was just discovered. A book written on Earth. Nobody on the station has read it yet. Apart from me. Wow. What's it about? Stick around, and you'll find out. My newest performance piece is a reading of it. Oh, nice. Which part? All of it, Harold. All of it. What? Without you read a whole book. It's gonna be a wild ride. Twelve-hour so book marathon. Wow. Okay. 
Good luck. This. What the hell's he got on? Look at that. Pockets. Hey, buddy. Hey, Harold. Great to see ya. How about that announcement, eh? Yeah, it was really something. It sure was. I try not to busy myself with those kinds of affairs. I'm just happy you're joining in for the station jog. The jog? Nah. Uh, I was only... Chris promised me he'd be here any minute. Now we've really got a jog team on our hands. I think I'll pass. No one's forcing you, Harold. But why don't you keep me company until Chris arrives? Oh, no. Okay, that I can do. How's the post today? Ah. Oh. It's a bit slow, what with the tube to the utility district being out, so I can't really work. Not working makes me so restless. I hope it's back soon. Good thing you have the arcades to jog. Music around. in the background. Yep. Dun, dun, and Chris dun, can't get to the school dun, for the dun, same dun, reason. Dun, dun, dun. So at least we'll have plenty of time to work out together. That young man is almost as fit as me. Why do I feel like I'm the odd one out? Oh, here he is. Oh, hey, Chris. Last to arrive, first to finish. That's my motto. Harold, won't you stay? The job team won't be the <clears> same <throat> without you. Yeah, venga, Harold. You can't leave now. I just got here. Jog team, jog team, jog team. Look at what I really must be going. Don't make me look bad. Um, okay. Go jog team. <laughs> Come on, Harold. Keep up. Deep breaths, Harold. I can't. This is as fast as he goes. He's like a slug compared to them. Run with the jog. I thought I was fit. <sighs> I guess I failed. I got a message from Professor Moreau. Go on. Without me. <sighs> Good show, Harold. <laughs> How's everyone feeling? <sighs> I think there was a new personal best for me. Fine. Fine. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> How'd you both keep so fit? Oh, you know me, Harold. I've been running around this station for years. Gotta keep up my reputation for same-day service after all. Healthy body, healthy mind. That's what keeps me going. Gotta set a good example for those lazy students of mine, too. <laughs> Have you got any tips? Just keep on moving, Harold. You never know when you'll have to slow down. So keep going while you can. Wow. Well, that was part of the story. I got an achievement for it. Certificate of Participation. Participate in the station jog. So it seems like a lot of the... Uh, the Achievements in the game are completely optional. Like, he probably didn't have to do the skiing. He didn't have to do the jog. Wow. All right, well, cool. Uh, I have to get my cat out of the room because my wife has arrived home from work. I'll be right back in just a moment. Thanks for understanding. Okay, I'm back, and it's time to resume. It looks like we got a message from Professor Jay Moreau. So that's Professor, who we've been talking with. Someone put graffiti on the wall. It's an eyesore. Please clean it off. So we have to go clean up graffiti somewhere. Okay. I don't know where we find that. And to do... We have to check on Bridget. The message for Cyrus. Clean up graffiti and speak to secretary number eight. So we have a lot of stuff to do as we uh, explore around here. Shall we go up here? Yes. What's up here? Anything? What's on this board? Nothing. Darn. Looks like there's an upper floor to the arcade we can check out. <laughs> See what's up there? A statue? Why does this... Wait, what? The statue has the head of, like, a frog. <laughs> what the heck? Look! Look at the head of the statue. It's like it has tentacle arms and like a frog's head. What is going on? Coming soon. This is going to be something new that they're building, but it hasn't been built yet. Okay. I have no idea what that statue is supposed to be. What's behind? I guess behind is another piece of the ship that you can see out there or something. Hmm. 
Oh, what's this? Like a cafe? Hello. Hey, man. Welcome to the fish fish hut. Fish hut. Sample our homegrown fedora fish or our fresh water catch of the day. What's the catch of the day today? Today, we have the great spotted super grouper. That sounds tasty. Just out of interest, is that a native fish? Hard to tell, man. <laughs> you know, a few of the ship's fish escaped during the crash. So we don't know if they thrive in the ocean or even intermingle with native species. But we can guarantee that fresh super grouper taste you know and love. Wait a minute, did you, did you hear what he just said? He said when they crashed, the fish that were in the in the ship escaped. So they don't know if it's a native fish to the planet or if this is interspecies where their fish mated with the fish of this planet. So when they crashed, they just, they basically screwed up the planet, right? They, all their invasive species might have escaped into the planet. Well, that's not good. Maybe that's why the fish out there have signs, right? Hello again. F -f 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 Fancy some f -f 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 fish? You know where we are. All right, if we need fish, I go talk to him. Who's this? Nobody. You cannot talk to this woman. Look, I cannot talk to her. All right, I guess we've done everything we can do here. here now right where are we holding to head now so energy district we, we could talk to Bridget Bridget in the lab district again right um can we go to the energy district we can go all right let's see what's there relax with all water you're here Thank you for choosing all water tubes. No contaminants detected. Look at this. This commences in three. Three. Wait for it. Zero. Inspecting. What? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> this game is so weird, man. What's going on here? Oh, there's Bridget. And Chris? Oh. What are they doing in there? Is this what I Tommy was afraid of? I can lip read. Hmm, it seems like Bridget is pretty excited about something. It looks like she's saying... You monster? You monster. How could you? What? Be so callous. Be so callous. This is serious. Oh, Chris is replying. Let's see. I know, but I can't help how I feel. I can't sugarcoat it. The truth hurts. I can't sugarcoat it. The truth hurts. But you're picking what they're saying. Anyway, we should get back before people notice. Hmm. Pretty mysterious. Now I wish I'd never skipped those lip reading classes. He didn't know he has no idea what they said. He literally has no idea what they said. <laughs> he just made it up. We gotta go back to Tommy when we get a chance. I can't go in there now. Can we go in here? This. Oh. Uh, oh look who it is. It's the same guy. In a different room Hello, now. Si. It's Sai. It Cyrus. Oh, tough, Harold. Every detail has a detail. It's like this. Philip Reed. No, oh, uh, it's good you're here, actually. Yeah? What do you need? Well, I'm having a bit of difficulty with a 3D printer. It's leaving gaps everywhere. Oh, okay. Shall I take a look? Yes, please. But I hope you're better with technology than you are with the ladies. Um, I hope so, too. Anyway, see if you and your screwdriver can get this printer its third dimension back. I want you to fix a 3D printer? I'm stuck. Oh. You have to undo the screws first to remove the front panel. So 
those screws drop on the floor. You don't need them or anything. You don't need to replace this panel. <laughs> Dude, how many screws are on this thing? Look, look how many screws I have to take off. There's like a do dozens of screws. Get this front panel off. God. <laughs> Something happened then. Uh, keep going. Oh my lord. Look how many screws. Yeah, puzzle. I don't know if you would consider this a puzzle. This is more just like excessive numbers of screws to be removed. I think you're nearly there. <laughs> now, do you see that hole? That hole? Ah! Oh no! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Harold. I couldn't <laughs> resist. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Sai, was the printer even broken? Mm, maybe, maybe. What a dick! If it's any consolation, I discovered this little trick the hard way. Ow! Why didn't you just fix it then? Well, where would the fun have been in that? I'm not sure I like your idea of fun. Hmm, funny. Sunny says the same thing to me. But I guess she didn't like your idea of fun either, eh? Ow. Think of it as a wake-up call, Harold. Yeah, a little extra juice. Wow. Oh, that reminds me. Moreau asked me to ask you, how are the details coming along? Oh, thanks, Harold. Just like her to ask that. Huh. <laughs> Is it? Um, anyway, <laughs> see you next time, Sai. Wow. So I electrocuted myself and I delivered a message. <laughs> 3D printer shock in the notebook. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. This game is something else, man. This game is something else. Uh, Harold, uh, one more thing. Oh no. What is it, Sai? Could you take Morrow a message? I suppose. Is it just going to be like hers? No, 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 nothing like that. It's something definitely unrelated. So, what's the message? Oh, okay, fine. You got me. Happy? Just tell her procedure smeech. Nah. She puts the Y R U in Cyrus. I don't know that's such a good idea. I mean, what is this whole thing about exactly, anyway? She started it. Back in the days, we were both part of the Archive Club. She was always so darn keen to throw away all the rules and invent new archiving procedures. She called it a healthy distrust for calcified mental models. But all it did was stop us ever getting anything done. <laughs> so, you disagreed about archiving? Precisely. But it was fundamental. I mean, we respected each other's work, but there was this deep difference. And I guess neither of us was willing to budge. So, what did you decide about the archives? That's not important anymore. Come on, man. Sometimes you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay. So, no message for her? <sighs> Just tell her I say hi. <laughs> She'll know what I mean. Okay. Catch you later, Sai. Poor Helgen says, what's up? It's been a while. How are you doing, Poor Helgen? Good to see you. And El Grey Zoro says, this seems to me this is the type of game you play on a Sunday for some relaxation if you've been playing intense stuff all week. It's definitely a laid-back, relaxing game. There's nothing to it. There's no challenge. It's just kind of walking around and delivering messages and doing menial tasks, but, you know, enjoying the, the quirky dialogue, right? Okay. So... I guess we go back to the lab district now to trade in some of this Location stuff, right? Journey commencing. And then we also got to go talk to Tommy. Order, but I guess we go back to lab district first. Thank you for traveling with all water. So the to-do is a mini message or reconnect. Oh, you know what? We should go see Tommy first. Since we're going to need to go get the rock from Tommy before we go back to the doctor. 
for the professor. Let's go back to Tommy and hopefully get the rock from him this time. Alright. We know you enjoy traveling with all water. You're welcome. I haven't run into his brothers yet. He's still at the bar. Hey, Zim. What do you know about Filter Frankie? Filter Frankie? Yeah. Frankie. Who likes filters? Hence, Filter Frankie. <laughs> Right. Well, I heard he's always mucking about in the filters, digging up all sorts that he sells to Tommy. What I want to know is, why doesn't anyone just go down there and find stuff? Have you ever been down to filters, Alon? Nah, you? I got shown him once. Not very appealing, and technically off limits. Well then, there we go. Who you reckon he, or indeed she, is then? Well, we can probably surmise he, or indeed she, isn't really called Frankie. Solid reasoning, Alon. So my guess is, he or she could be anyone. <laughs> could be what you, a nice Alan. guess. Could be you, Zim. Aye. Then, uh, there would we be. Down the filters, most like. Aye. Good thing we're not down the filters. I'm just getting comfy. Such meaningful dialogue. <laughs> okay, then. Going down the filters. I'm I'm sorry to bother you again, but I went looking for Mrs. Vandervart, and she was at the harvest office. Not news. It's her office. Where else would she be? I know, but it's more who was there with her that I thought, you know, I should mention. What? Who was she with? It looked totally professional. I didn't see anything bad. Just Senor T Tinnerbaum. Ah, uh, what? What's he doing in her office? There's no way he knows enough about energy. <laughs> if I still had my own hair, it would never have come to this. Oh, no. Tommy, I'm sure Poor it's guy. not like that. I just... You don't understand, Harold, what it's like to get old. But I'll be damned if I'm going to take this lying down. Tommy, I don't think you should uh, get angry. And you're in on this with me now, Harold. Oh, no. You did the right thing bringing this to me. I'm really sure it's nothing, just a lunch chat. I've just been so busy working on this damned store sign, thinking Bridget would love the ambition, you know? See me as a real go-getter again. But maybe this whole time I should have been showing her signs of my love. I'll bet she knows you... You're absolutely right. We'll modify the sign... What? <laughs> ...tonight. Make it great. into a great big sparkly neon proclamation of my... nay, our love. A sign she won't be able to miss. A sign to blind that glossy maned Casanova. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure that's the sign. Don't doubt it, Harold. This is gonna work. I just feel it. You're in, right? Oh my god. Will you help me save our love? Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll try. Knew I could count on you. Let's get to work. Wow. So he's gonna waste his whole day making a sign. She's not supposed to do. I'm gonna go freshen up a little. Might even put on a different outfit now that I think of it. <laughs> Will you go and look for Bridget for me? Oh, come on. I just want the rock. We just need the rock. My dear Bridget. I'm sorry we haven't been able to spend much time together recently. So I get how you might be attracted to the man-machine with the flowing looks of an angel that you call your friend. But I do beg you to give me another chance. Please, Bridget, will you let me back into your heart and take this monument <laughs> to our love as a sign of my great affection? Tommy, of course I love you, and I would never betray you. I just wanted to give you some space. I saw you working so hard on your new sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Couldn't tell me what? Oh, what the heck. The ship's facing some issues with the energy budget. I knew you would need a lot of light for your sign, and I just wasn't allowed to tell you. Ha! No way we've got an energy problem here. Uh... That was it? No helping Tinner Bomb with his spray tan? That was it. No spray tan. I'm so sorry, Buttercupsy. 
I love you. Wow. I love you. Oh, and they applaud. <laughs> the whole town applauds. Yes. Yes. Thank you for your help, Harold. Amazing. I was hoping you'd accept this stone as a thank you. Ah! Someone oh, stole no. it? Moreau won't be happy to hear about this. Someone stole it. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, Harold. Listen, about the rock, <laughs> I'm really sorry it's gone. You know, I would have loved for you to have it. <clears throat> uh, it's okay, Tommy. It wasn't your fault. I just feel bad, you know? I was so wrapped up in my own stuff, maybe... Ah, uh, I don't know. Thanks, Tommy. Maybe it'll turn up. I'm just glad you and Bridget made up. Thanks, Harold. You're a swell guy. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Let you know if I hear anything. Thanks, Tommy. Wow. This reminds you of Moral Oral. I hope it only reminds you of Moral Oral because of the the animation style. Certainly the tone is a lot different. Moral Oral is pretty messed up show. Pretty gross. Uh, really screwed up plots. Wait. Major? Harold, if it transpires you had anything to do with this wanton violation of code 7887, then so... No, no. I want to find the rock more than anyone. Hmm. Say I believe you. Can you think of anything that might help us find the culprits? I'm sorry, Major. I'll let you know if I think of anything. See that you do. That missing rock is a stain on my sheet of justice. I will. Bye, Major. <laughs> Be good, Harold. Why does he always suspect Harold? It's like he has a grudge against Harold. He always thinks Harold is doing everything wrong. It's pretty messed up, actually. But Bridget? Harold, how are you doing? Uh, you know, same old. Yep, same old here, too. Energy issues? You heard that, Mr. Busy Ears? Ugh, but yes. I mean, we've always got to be careful and efficient. And, you know, this isn't public. But I want to be extra careful right now until we figure out what's going on. Is the station using more energy than it used to? Well, yeah. Especially the transportation system. And the damn tubes or tickets never work and just get more expensive all the time anyway. Right. I don't reduce it. How does the energy production even work? That's true. Where are they getting their power from? You know, I'm not sure I've ever understood exactly how the energy process works. Gosh, why are you asking me this now? It's not exactly a line answer. Look, if you really want to know, swing by the energy harvest office sometime and I'll break it down for you. I don't reduce the tube transportation system. Remind me why we can't just reduce the transport system? Huh. I ask myself the same thing. Every time we add some new upgrade or expand it, it eats up more energy. Our production process doesn't get any more efficient. Plus, when we held an anonymous vote about it, the majority of the Dorans said they'd rather have more transport now rather than more energy later. So... I'd better go. Thanks, Bridget. See you, Harold. Hmm. Complex issue, man. That's life. Everything over here is the same, it looks like. Buddy, you got a sec? Always, always. Take as many seconds as you need. So you've been the postman for ages. What was it like before the crash? The main thing that's changed is people get their mail quicker now, thanks to the tube system. Say what you will about all water. But you can't knock free, uh, I mean, mostly free movement of labor and letters. Ah, but I remember now. One time, probably a few months before the crash, I had to deliver a letter right across to the other side of the station. Everything that could have gone wrong on that delivery did go wrong. Hmm. First, I tried to take a shortcut and got lost. I had to go through some construction works and lost my hat somewhere along the way. Then I got back on track, but tripped over a rat and tore my uniform. I stopped to get some food along the way and burned my mouth. <laughs> Never been back to Charlie's silly chili grilly since. <laughs> and you know, what would it have looked like to the letters recipient if I'd turned up hatless, red-faced, bruises on my knees? But I was already late, so I went anyway. I posted the letter and sat down on the bench opposite to catch my breath and fell asleep. When I woke up, she was standing there, looking concerned at me. 
Her? Um, yes. Anyway, no torn uniforms since the tube system was put in place. Bye, buddy. See you, Harold. What a story, but I wonder who he's talking about, right? Ona? Harold? Give me a clue about the plot. Come on, give me a clue about the plot. No way I'm ruining a surprise for you. Let's just say it's an epic Bildungsroman told through multiple narrators set across the ancient Byzantine Empire, the far future planet of Gazorpazor, and the then present day of 19th century Papua New Guinea. What the hell is he talking about? Wow, it does sound pretty <laughs> epic. What's it called? Mabola. You notice these suspender straps say what on them? What does that even mean? What, what? <laughs> so, where did you find the book? Oh, he's got a freaking drum on his back. I have a friend in logistics. There were a couple of unopened safety deposit boxes. Unopened since launch because the owners hadn't actually made it onto the ship. The statute of limitations ran out. They cracked them open and she gave me a call to see if I wanted this book. Whoa. What else was in the boxes? Oh, I didn't ask, but I wonder who it belongs to. Yeah, and why they never made it onto the ship. Some mysteries will never be solved. Huh. Oh, but maybe I'll base my next interpretive dance piece on that idea. I can't wait to see it. I'll be watching. Good luck. Thanks, Harold. Hope you enjoy the show. A woman walked up, and then she's gone. She was here. But then she must have walked away while I was talking with him. She's gone now. I don't know who it was, because look, she's not even here anymore. I guess there are just random people who walk around. Is she, is she it? You can't talk to her. All right, so there's random people who walk around. You can't really do anything with. All right. Wait a minute, you think I can order a beer now that Tommy's off, off of the counter? Hey, what do you know about Filter Frankie? No. Filter Frankie? Nope. Yeah, Frankie, who likes filters. You cannot get a beer. All right, well, I guess we're good. We can now head back to uh, the doctor. Or the, he's the doctor. It's the professor, right? We go to... Oh, this guy's gone. This now. Uh-oh. Harold, got you a message. Oh, thank you, Miss... Zoodle. Pleased to Zoodle? make your acquaintance. So, it's from Felix. He says there's something he wants to show you and to expect a secret message soon. Oh, what? Why? I mean... And why couldn't he just have said that to me himself? I don't know. Go ask him. My work here is done. Later's, mister. Thanks. Thanks, Zoodles. What a name. All right. Well, this is a good place to split the part, I think. And uh, when we continue, we'll probably go back to the lab and we'll talk to the professor about what we've discovered and see where the plot takes us. But thank you all for watching. I hope you're enjoying. Harold Halibut, I'll see you in the next part.